what about Alistair then? Say he were to retire tomorrow, what would you do? Cry. <laughs> so I suppose we both have very strong opinions and we could fall out and whatnot, but as I say, I can work, but if my brain just doesn't match up, I can make work for myself. Alistair like, always just sees a handy way around something or he'd say to me, why do you not do such and such? And I'm thinking to myself, like, why could I not have thought on that? Big machinery, big characters, big farming. Nobody does it like us. Find it for yourself at FarmFix. Would you have much bother with like people? Like one year this we had a bother with digging we were digging the spuds. Yeah. We were digging we knew the digging you were seeing that big patch dug he must have been selling to it wasn't away for himself. So we were digging in the field and we left the sector in harvest and all that night. Yeah. We had a real bit we hadn't that much to dig. We came down in the morning that old big bit dug, I suppose it was a year we're going to be away the next day. <laughs> That's just the world we live on. The way you work the prop corn, the wetter the barley would be, the more you'd have to put on. Our barley I think around 17%, because uh, it, uh, it was a great day yesterday for cotton. Because it's going under the biosea damp and on about two gallons, there's no, well there is a flow meter as such, but really the first load you're only, I kind of guess it. If you were selling barley, it probably would be better dried, you'd have a better market for it, but because we're not selling it, that doesn't really affect us. <laughs> Like wear feet anyway. Splash a bit of water around it, no? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of putting the prop corn on, just with a spring of water. <laughs> I don't think it would work, Ryan. <laughs> do you make up your own spraying program then, or does somebody, or like, is there an advisor on that? No, or? you do get agronomists and stuff, but I just swore myself, just so the different uh, man I would buy the spray off there, and me and Hamlet would discuss it. And, we would go different sprays for different, you know, we maybe go with one spray this time and then something different at a time and then back to the one where, you know, different stages are growing. So as you're spraying early there, whenever they're coming through the ground, you're like for leaf blight and that, and then later on you could have tumor blight, you know, so then you're changing, that's why they don't spray well at different stages of blight to you. That's about the reason why you change back and forth too, so you don't grow a resistance to some of the sprays. Is it a brown baler or square baler? Brown baler. Brown baler. What was the reason behind that? Is it just because? It's cheap. <laughs> I like it, Ali. I like it. <laughs> we only use it for straw. We don't deal any silage. Yeah. And you would never think about starting to bale silage? Nope. Like, because I asked Logan about your third cup of grass, and I was just like, look, would you not bale it up? And he goes, it's going in the pit. <laughs> That's all I get told. We don't like bales. <laughs> well, I don't think anybody really likes bales. So the shed's coming on right and well. It could be also there for it. We get the concrete down. And now I'm not for it because it's been sort of in the pipeline for the past three years, so it's just it's nice to see it, taking a shape. If we had the cattle on the shed, that would be the big and then we'll get it finished off. When did you see it then being completed? Two months ago. <laughs> <laughs>